we are going to be looking at how to calculate closing stock using either FIFO or weighted average. Now, this is also part of question one. Sorry, this is also part of paper one. OK, and what I find is often learners don't go in prepared with this knowledge because they think it's a paper two topic only. But in paper one, you can be asked to calculate the value of closing stock using either FIFO or using either weighted average or specific identification. So for your paper, please prepare those three aspects of calculating closing stock. We are going to look at the November 2021 paper, and this is question one, 1.1. 1 .1. Calculate the value of closing stock for suits, and it was omitted from the stock sheets. So they want us to calculate the value of closing stock. Here they say, I'm just scrolling down, the first in first out method is used. So when they ask you to calculate the value of closing stock, you must always ask yourself which method is being used. And dependent, depending on which method is being used, that is how you calculate the value of closing stock. Here you use first in first out. So the first in first out method says that whatever I bought first, I sold first. And whatever I have left, I have 240 units left, I have left from my last items. Okay, I've left from my last items. So let's look at the information. I started out with 110 items. Then I bought 760. So that's my opening stock on the 1st of July, 110. I bought in November, Feb, and May, I bought a total of 760. And on the 25th of May, I returned 24. Now you ask yourself from which purchase was that? If you look at the prices here, you can see that the 24 that I returned in May was from the May purchase, just by looking at the price. So how would you calculate this learners? Firstly, you know that there's 240 items left over. The first thing you have to do is you have to write down the number of units that you bought. Okay, so the 110 was purchased. So 110 was purchased. Then I bought 360. Then I bought 170. Then I bought 230. But of the 230, I returned 24. Okay, so there I have it. I started out with 110. I bought 360, 170, and 310. Now, my 310 I don't have because I returned 24. So how much do I have left? I actually have. Sorry, my not my 310, sorry, my uh, 230. I have 206 of those items left over. So, how many items do they say I have on hand? And that's important to know. I have 240 units on hand. Okay, so the 240 units must be absorbed into 240. Okay, I have 206 of that, and the remainder comes from that purchase. I must have sold all of that because I sold that first, and so I take 240 minus 206, and I have 34 of that purchase left over because it means that I sold the rest. So I have 34 of my previous purchase and I have 206 of my current purchase. I didn't sell any of my May purchase. So if I look at my amounts, now I'm going to put my amounts in. Okay, now I'm going to say I have 206 are at 2,850. Okay, and I have 34 at 2,600. 
I apologize for my untidy working there. I did not think ahead and I didn't use my space correctly. So how are we going to calculate that? I say 34 times 2,600, okay? And that's going to give me an amount of 88,400 rand. That's only my first amount. And then my second amount is 206 at 2850, and that gives me 587,100. I'm going to add that together, and my final answer is going to be 675,500, and that is going to be my answer. Okay. So you don't have to put this in this answer block. You could also work it out a bit more neatly. And that is my final answer there. How did I work it out? If it's FIFO, whatever I bought first, I sell first. So I always have of my last units left over. I took away the 24 there. So I only have 206 of that, not 230 because I returned 24. And I have the remainder between the 240 and the 206 is the 34 that I have at my next price. And that is how you work out FIFO. In another activity, and this is from the May, June 2022 paper. You can see it there. Sorry, it's from the May, June 2021 paper. Okay, let's just confirm that. It's from the May, June 2021 paper. And in that paper, they asked you to work out the stock valuation. And that is of weighted average. Okay, it says the business sells sunglasses. It's the same, it's a question. And it is question, let's just look at the, the question number of this paper. It is question two. It's the same statement of comprehensive income. And here they're also saying calculate the value of closing stock using the weighted average. So please learners go into the exam prepared with uh, knowing how to calculate the stock using either weighted average, using either FIFO or using specific identification. So I don't have the answer sheet for that, but I'm first going to show you the formula for weighted average. Your formula for weighted average is as follows, okay? Your numerator is always rand value, okay? So your numerator is rand value and your denominator is number. So yeah, I have the rand value of opening stock. This is a formula plus purchases plus carriage on purchases. It's either carriage or custom. Okay, so it's either carriage or custom minus returns. So that's the RAND value of opening stock plus purchases plus carriage on purchases or custom duty minus returns. At the bottom, I have the number of opening stock the number of purchased items, carriage on purchases and custom is not a number. It's just a value, it's just a RAND value and I minus returns. Okay, so that is my formula to calculate the weighted average per unit. It's only the weighted average per unit. So let's use the activity to work out the weighted average per unit, and then we're going to work out the closing stock after that. So, firstly, my RAND value, my opening stock. You look at your dates, that there is opening stock. Okay, so I'm going to write down that in my numerator, 2,433,000. Okay, to that, I'm going to plus my purchases. My total purchases there, I'm not going to add the, the different amounts there. There's my total purchases is 8,572,000. Now I'm going to look to see if there's any 
carriage on purchases? No, there doesn't seem to be carriage on purchases. If there's any returns, no, there doesn't seem to be any returns. Okay, it's simply opening stock plus purchases. Now, I'm my numerator, I'm going to divide that by my number of units opening stock and my number of units and my number of units purchased. There we go. You can please write that down. So I just simplified it there. That's my opening stock RAND value. That's my purchases RAND value. That's my opening stock number of units. That's my purchases number of units. So now I simply take 11 million and 5,000 RAND divided by 15,500 and I get a weighted average per unit of 710 RAND. That is not my answer. Okay, that is just my weighted average per unit. To work out the answer, now I'm going to take the closing stock number of units and I'm going to times the 17 by the closing stock number of units to get the answer, which is my closing stock rand value. So I'm going to times that by 2,400 and my closing stock RAND value that's going to go into my statement is 1,704,000 and that is how you work out weighted average. Please remember this formula, okay? Opening stock RAND plus purchases plus carriage or custom minus returns. Then I'm going to have number of units opening stock plus purchases minus returns. And there we go. That is how we work out the weighted average. Uh, this session will be working on the retained income note. I am taking this activity out of the November 2021 paper where you are asked to complete the retained income note and it is question one and we're going to focus on 1.3 the retained income note. I just want you to note that if something is shaded, it means you don't have to work out that amount. So in this case, you are not required to work out the opening balance. In fact, if you work it out, no marks will be awarded. But I just wanted to point that out to you that if something is shaded in the block, then you don't have to work it out. So in front of me, I have the activity we're going to do the retained income note, and there again it's shaded, so that balance was given in the retained income account. So like the previous activity that I did, we're going to look for the information that we need to complete this note. But before we do that, we need to know what goes into this note. Okay, so according to my knowledge, what goes into this note is on the balance at the beginning of the year, the opening balance. Remember, I said that's always the opening balance. And this amount here is always the closing balance. So if you were required to complete the opening and the closing balance, then you would get that information here. Here's your opening balance, 2020. And remember, you read from right to left. There's your closing balance, 2021. So if that was required, you would put that amount in on top and that amount in at the bottom. But you can already see that it has been given. Opening balance, closing balance. So what goes in between? So learners, you need to know this is only for five marks, but it's five marks that you cannot afford to miss out on. You need to know your formats. So net profit after tax. That's the bottom line figure in your statement of comprehensive income. Okay, it's that bottom line figure. 
it's after tax because you first draw up your statement of comprehensive income, which is also known as your income statement, and then you draw up your notes. So it's after you've determined your net profit. After that, we are going to have the repurchase of shares. Okay, that comes in after that. And then you are going to have your dividends. Okay, here you're going to have your dividends and you can break up your dividends into the two, your interim and your final, or you can just put in your total dividends for the year. I'm just going to put in total dividends for the year, but if you are not sure, you can put in interim dividend there. They've given you enough space and then final dividends there. Okay, so that will then be added together or they are both negative amounts in this case because you don't have another line for the total dividend. Then also remember that your repurchase of shares is also a negative figure. So let's look at the information that they give us for this activity. We got the balances. Now we're going to go and find the information and I'm just going to scroll down this activity until I get to the relevant information, which says shares and dividends. Remember, for your retained income note, you're going to have repurchase of shares, and there it is, and then dividends. So let's see what they tell us. 26,000 shares were repurchased on the 1st of July at 3 Rand above the average price. So they give you the above average price. OK, they say that they bought it at three rand above the average price. So this is quite an easy activity. I'm simply going to take the 26,000 and I'm going to times it by the three rand because that is already my above average price. So I'm going to take 26,000 and I'm going to times it by three, OK, because that's three rand and I'm going to get my answer of 78,000 rand. I'm going to explain that to you in a minute. Let's just complete the dividends and the, um, the rest. Then my next information is the business did not pay an interim dividend. So there's no interim dividend paid. However, a final dividend of 65 cents per share was declared and at the time that they declared the dividend, there was 1,800,000 shares in issue. So you take your 1,800,000 shares that's in issue and you times it by 0.65. So there was no interim dividend, but there was a final dividend. I take my number of shares, 1,800,000, and I'm going to times it by 0.65. Why 0, 0,65? Because it's 65 cents. And I'm going to get 1,170,000. Okay, so that's the answer I'm going to get there. Learn is this amount, the net profit after tax, you are going to find here. But because we're not doing this at this um, section of the work, I'm going to fill this in. When you are given an activity that precedes this. So in other words, the amount that you find here after doing your adjustments, you're going to fill in there. You will get a part mark for copying down that amount and putting it in there. So in this case, that answer is 3,474,800. Okay, that amount is that answer there. So if you have this paper and you're going to go through this paper to practice for your paper one, that is the answer that you're going to find here and that amount you're going to copy there. You don't need that amount and that is given there. So there we go. You have now answered that question. This was quite an easy question. OK, it was it wasn't a very difficult one for five marks. What is important to know your format of your retained income note. Thank you so much, learners. My next activity is going to be the ordinary share capital note. This session is going to cover the ordinary share capital note. 
In the first video, I did the retained income and ordinary share capital note together. Second video, I did the retained income note. And now I'm going to do the ordinary share capital note to show you the different ways in which this activity can be asked. Please note that when you do the ordinary share capital note, you look for information on shares. So now we're going to go and find information on shares. So we're going to go up into our activity and there we see again information on shares and dividends. But this time we're only going to look for information on shares because we are going to do the ordinary share capital note. OK, so they say on the 1st of March, that's your opening balance. Remember, your, your information runs um, down from first date to last date. So on the 1st of March, there was 800,000 shares in issue. Then new shares were issued. So you issued new shares and then you repurchased shares. And at the end of the year, you had a certain number of shares in issue. So let's look at what we need for this note. Remember, I said you must always know what you need for a note. So therefore, you are going to study the formats of your notes. So if I look at this note here, there we go. What do we need for this note? For this note, we are going to need our ordinary share capital information. There they say 800,000 ordinary shares at the beginning of the year and they don't give us a balance. So we need to go and find that balance. OK, then they say 100,000 new shares were issued. We're going to see what price that is on. And then we know that shares were repurchased. So it's repurchase of shares. So you need to know your format. The other thing that you have to know is, is this repurchase at average or is it above average? Now, this amount here is at average. Your retained income information is above average. So this one here is at average. OK, so let's go and look at our information a lot more in detail. I'm going to put this back up again and I'm going to go and look at my information. For this particular note, I'm going to look at ordinary share capital, not, or not ordinary shareholders equity, because ordinary shareholders equity is share capital plus retained income. I only want to focus on ordinary share capital because that's the note that I am given. There they give you the opening balance. Okay, so there it's given and there the closing balance is given. So I'm going to put that in as my opening balance. So let's do that. Let's put the 6,400,000 in as the opening balance. So that goes in there, 6,400,000. 400,000. So some of the information will be in clear sight. You just have to find that information. Then new shares were issued and in the activity they say 100,000 new shares were issued. I don't know what that amount is because they don't tell me what the new issue is. Okay. Then they say 30,000 Shares were repurchased at 120 more than the average. OK, so now I don't want the more than the average. I want the average. So let me explain something to you. Let me just put this in here. There's my 30,000 in brackets because repurchase will always go in brackets. Let me just explain this to you. OK, there are three prices where repurchase of shares are concerned. The first one is the average, the average price, which is in the ordinary share capital note. The second one is the above average. And that is the one rand 20 that they are talking about in the activity. This activity, I neglected to say, I apologize, comes out of the November 2021 paper. OK, so please find the 2021 paper, November paper, and work through this activity with me. So we know that 
the shares were, sh were sold at, or repurchased, my apologies, were repurchased at 120 more than the average price. I want the average price. I don't want the 120. However, why are they giving me the 120? Because the next price, the last price, is the buyback or the repurchase price, and that I'm going to need. So each of these have a place that it goes into. The average price goes into the ordinary share capital note. The above average goes into the retained income note. Okay, let me put that there. That is the average price goes into the ordinary share capital note. The above average goes into the retained income note. They're not asking for the retained income note, so I don't need that amount now. But the buyback price goes into the cash flow statement. So I'm going to use that information later on. But how do I then work out my average? Okay. I now have my 800,000 plus my new 100,000 that I've uh, issued, so that's 900,000 minus my 30,000. I now have 870,000 shares in issue. To work out the average, I'm going to take that amount, divide by, sorry, yeah, that amount there, divided by that amount to get my average price. Why am I doing it this way? When I start out, there's a certain price, okay? When I issue new shares, that average changes. So, if I had that amount, if I had this amount here, which I don't have, okay, I don't have that amount, then I could have worked out my average this way. So, there's one of two ways to work out the average. Then I could have taken that plus that, but I don't have the amount. But hypothetically speaking, let's say I had that amount. I would say that plus that divide by 900,000 and it would give me the average. Okay. Now, once I have done my calculation, that is also at average. So once I have repurchased, the amount after that is also at the average price. And I will prove that to you later on. You can actually figure that out. So this amount divide by that amount. Let me show you the calculation. I'm going to say 7,395,000. And I'm going to divide it by the 870,000. And that's going to give me an average of 8 rand 50. So that is my average that I'm going to work with. And my average is 850. So I'm going to say 50,000 times 850. And it's going to give me an amount of 255,000. Okay. Now, the only way to work out this amount is to work backwards to say closing balance plus back my repurchase. If I work upwards, then I go in the opposite direction, then whatever I minus, I must now plus. So closing balance plus repurchase minus opening balance. And this becomes my balancing figure of 1,250,000. So learners, if I take these two added together and I divide it by that, I'm also going to get 850. But I couldn't do that because I didn't have that amount. So I have to use this closing balance to work out my average. But you can only do this. You can only work with the bottom figure if you first issue and then repurchase. If it's the other way around, then you can't use the bottom figure. Then you must use the top figure. Okay, so let me just re-emphasize that. You can only use the bottom figure if you first issue, so it's opening balance, then plus the issue, then you repurchase. If it's the other way around, like in the first activity where you have an opening balance, then you repurchase, then you issue, you can't use your bottom balance, you have to use your top balance. And that is for six marks, and I hope that this explanation is clear to you. Thank you so much, learners. This um, question comes out of the May-June 2022 paper. So it is the most recent accounting paper that was written. 
And today we are going to focus on question 1.2, it's Prudence Limited. And in this question, question 1.2.1, they ask for the ordinary share capital note and the retained income note. But before we do these notes, before we even start, learners, you need to know what goes into the note. In other words, what do I have to put into this note? So I'm going to show you. Let me just reduce this. I apologize. Just make this a bit smaller. There we go. So this is the answer sheet for activity 1.2.1. I've got my ordinary share capital note there, and I've got my retained income note here. In my ordinary share capital note, they didn't give me any information other than an amount here. And in my retained income note, they left out some information. And learners, you must know that they can actually leave out any of the information presented here. For this note, you must know that the first line is always your opening balance and the last line is always your closing balance. So the first line will be back. Balance on 1 March 2021 and the last line will be balance on 28 February 2022. Okay, so you need to know that that is important. In the middle, you have two amounts of information or two bits of information. The one is repurchase of shares and the other one is issue of shares, but we don't know in which order they are going to be presented. So for now, we're going to leave that blank until we look at the activity. Then in my retained income note, they give me the opening balance and they give me the closing balance and they give me some information in between. So you always start out with the opening balance followed by net profit. And the question usually that learners struggle with is, is this net profit before tax or is this net profit after tax? So how do you remember that? You need to remember that these notes come after the statement of comprehensive income. So I first draw up my statement of comprehensive income and then I draw up my notes. So this will be net profit after tax. OK, after I've calculated my tax, that's the bottom line figure in my statement of comprehensive income. There's my shares repurchased. Then I have dividends. My dividends is made up of two types of dividends. I have my interim dividend. And I have my final dividends. So I have my interim and my final. So that is all the information that was given. But... How do I know where to extract my information from? If I look at my extract from the accounting records, I can see there's my ordinary share capital and there's my retained income. This is always my opening balance and that's my closing balance. So you work from right to left. You read it from right to left. And please remember this in accounting, we read opening balance is always the second column and my closing balance is always the first column. OK, so this is how you read it and the dates are very clear. So you can see that they don't give me in both in both cases, they don't give me the opening balance, but they do give me the closing balance. And if I look at the activity, I can see that both amounts are given. There they give me the closing balance. And there they give me the closing balance. So I don't have to put that in. They have already put that in for me. Now I need to go and look at other information in my uh, question paper. And here it is. I look at shares and I look at dividends. That is the vital information that I need for this note. Only shares and dividends. So... If I want to look at this information here, okay, I look at my share capital, 
and I look at my dividends. If you look at the note here, oops, you're going to look at share capital here, okay? Issue of shares and repurchase of shares. I'm not sure in which order yet. And here I'm going to have repurchase of shares. So in my ordinary share capital note, I just look at share information. In my retained income note, I look at repurchase of shares and dividends. So this is all the information that I need and some more information. It is presented right at the bottom there. So it's BNC income tax because I'm going to need net profit after tax. OK, so let's look at the information here. I look at the information and I look at in date order and I complete these two notes in date order. So on the 1st of March, 75% of my authorized share capital, which is 1,200, was in issue. 75% of my authorized share capital, which is a 1,200, was in issue. So I want to know the number of shares in issue. So I take 1,200,000, and I'm going to times that by 75%, and there, that answer is going to give me 900,000. So I have 900,000 shares in issue. Remember, I don't have the opening balance, so I can't work that out yet. Then they say, after that, I'm reading it in date order, 80,000 shares were repurchased from a retired shareholder. He was paid 20%, and the 20% is 136,000, above the average share price. Okay, he was paid 20% above the average share price. So, I know that after that, immediately after that, I repurchased 80,000 shares. Okay, so there's my 80,000 shares what that was repurchased. Okay, let me just write here, shares repurchased. Okay. Where else do I find shares repurchased? I find shares repurchased there, and I repurchased 80,000. Okay, so that amount there and that amount there, okay, they relate to each other. Now, the activity says that the above average amount, which is 20% of the total amount, is 136,000. In my retained income note, my shares repurchased is above average, okay? In my ordinary share capital note, my shares repurchased is at average. So there I have the average price, there I have the above average price. They say, that the above average price is 20%, okay? So anything that's above is more than 100. So my average will be 100%, okay? So I'm going to use this amount to work out that amount because the information says that they paid him 136000 which is 20% above the average so, how do I work that out? I take 136,000. I times it by 100 because I want the 100 and I have the 20. So, what I want over what I have. I want the 100 and I have the 20. So let me, let me put that out for you. What you want over what you have. Now, why do you want the 100? The average is 100%. The above average is 20%. Okay? Therefore, the total repurchase price is 120%. I don't want the 120 because the 120 goes somewhere else. I want the 100. I want the average. And the amount I'm going to get there is 
thousand, and that is my average price for my repurchase. So I'm gonna put here. I'm gonna put six hundred and eighty thousand, and that's how I got the six eighty. So my six eighty plus my one thirty six is going to give me my total buyback price. Okay. Now they tell me, I'm going in date order, remember? They say that this person does not qualify for a dividend. So I'm going to remember that when I do my dividends in my retained income note. Yeah. On the 31st of August, an interim dividend of 28 cents was paid. I'm doing these notes at the same time simply because the information is presented at the same time. So it's 28 cents per share. So there I have 900,000 shares at the beginning of the year. Then I repurchased shares. So remember, when I repurchase shares, I have fewer shares in issue. So now I have 820 shares in issue. When I pay the dividend, that shares or those shares were bought back already. So my interim dividend is based on 820,000 shares times 0.28. Not 28, because 28 will give me 28 rand. I want 28 cents, which is 0.28, and that's going to give me 229,600. Okay, and so that's how I work that out. My next line is going to say an additional 150 shares were issued. So I'm going to, and they don't give me the price, so let's look at that. An additional 150 shares were issued. So there we go, 150,000 shares, shares issued. Okay, so it's in this order now, and I don't have a price. Okay, so there's one of two ways that I can work it out. Let's work it out the one way first. In order to get my opening balance, remember, at this point, I work out the average. Okay, so if this amount, and how do I base my average on that amount if I had it? To work out my average, if it was given, or if that amount was given, I would have said that divide by that, but I don't have that amount. But I do have my 80,000 and 680,000. So I say 680,000 divide by 80,000 to get my average price. Okay, so I say 680,000, and I'm going to divide that by 80,000, and I'm going to get 8 rand 50 per share. So now I'm going to say 900,000 times 8 rand 50 per share because that's now my average price and I get 7,650,000. Sorry, 7,650,000. Learners, how will I work out this amount? I'm going to say closing balance plus minus. Okay, so I'm going to take my closing balance, which I have. I'm going to plus that back, and I'm going to minus that. And I'm going to get 984,000, okay? Or I can take 900, oh, sorry, and I'll take 900 minus plus to get that closing balance of 970,000. Okay, so that is how I'm going to work out that amount. I'm going to pause it so that you can look at it, so that you can try and work that out. Okay, and there I have my ordinary share capital account. How do I work out my retained income account? I'm going to add this together and put the answer there, my interim plus my final, and that's going to give me, remember it's a negative amount, 443. My net profit after tax I need to work out, and I work it out by looking at the information here. It says income tax for the year 
after taking into account all adjustments, amounted to 438,000. This is 30% of the net profit. Okay, so 438,000 is 30% of the net profit. So how do I work that out? I say 438, I have the 30 and I want the 70. I want 70%. So let me just show you. My net profit before tax is 100%. My tax, that's my net profit before tax. My tax is 30%. So therefore, my after tax, my net profit after tax is 70%. And I want my net profit after tax because I'm going to minus my tax from my net profit before tax. So that's why I say what I want over what I have. I have the 30%. I want the 70%. I want net profit after tax. And that's going to give me 1,022,000. How do I work that? I work up again. I take my closing balance plus, plus, minus. When you work up, wherever you minus, you're going to plus. So you're going to go in the opposite direction. That amount plus, plus, minus, and I'm going to get 753,000 as and opening balance. And learners, that is how I completed the only share capital account and the retained income account for the May, June 2022 paper. Thank you so much. And I'm my next video, I'm going to do a retained income account. And in another following video, I'm going to do an ordinary share capital account to show you the different ways in which this can be examined. In this activity, I'm going to cover income tax paid. So we're only going to focus on how to calculate income tax paid in the cash flow statement. I have the, the activity um, or the question, question two, in the November 2021 paper, which deals with cash flow. And the previous video was also taken out of that paper. So if you need uh, to know where income tax is um, going to be calculated, then you need to know the format of your cash flow statement. You'll see, I'll say that every time you need to know your formats. So cash generated from operations, yeah, it is shaded, so it means you don't need to fill out that amount. You don't even have to figure it out. It's not needed. And the other day I said that if something is shaded, you don't need that amount. Then interest paid, you also don't have to figure out. So don't waste your time. If it's shaded, you don't need that amount. But you are going to have to calculate tax paid, okay? In the next activity, we are going to do dividends paid. So what do you need for tax paid? You need three bits of information, okay? And I'm going to show you quickly. To calculate tax paid, you are going to need the following. Firstly, you are going to need income tax for the year. And that is the income tax that was calculated in your statement of comprehensive income or also known as your income statement. It's that amount that was calculated, a percentage of your net profit before tax. Okay. Then number two, you are going to need your SARS income tax for last year. And then you're going to need your SARS income tax for this year. So let me point out that information to you so that you can identify that information. All you need is that information. So let's just go and find that information. There I have net profit before tax and net profit after tax. I don't have income tax. I'm going to the extract from the statement of comprehensive income and nowhere do I see income tax. But I do know that the difference between my net profit before tax and the net profit after tax, that is my income tax. So can you see how the information can be hidden? So here's tip number one. 
Okay, if you know the statement of comprehensive income, you'll be able to identify how to find the income tax, my net profit before tax minus my net profit after tax equals my income tax. And so that is how I'm going to calculate my income tax. Okay, so that's 1,350,000 as per the activity minus 985,500. And that is going to give me an income tax of 364,500. So there we go. If you couldn't find that amount, then already you are stuck. So there I have my income tax amount. Sometimes this is given. Sometimes they say it's a percentage of that amount. Sometimes they give you the percentage and they say it's percentage of the net profit before tax, but they give you the net profit after tax. Then you must work out what you want over what you have. And we spoke about that the other day. So there's many ways to actually hide that amount. Then I said I need my SARS income tax for last year. Remember, you read it this way. So that's last year, that's this year. So my last year's balance, looking at that amount there, my last year's balance was a credit and this year's balance is a debit. And so that poses a bit of a situation. Okay, so what do I have so far? I have my income tax. Okay, then I have last year's balance of 35,900 and I have this year's balance of 29,100. Let me just show you here. And there I have it. This one here is a credit and that is a debit. Sometimes they also hide this amount by putting that under trade and other payables. The credit will always be under payables and that will be under receivables. The debit will always be under receivables. So there's many ways to hide these amounts. So what do I do with those amounts? Let me explain it to you. I'm going to start out my calculation to work out income tax paid. OK, so I'm going to work out tax paid and this is how I'm going to work it out. I'm going to take my income tax amount first, 364,500. Now I'm going to say. I'm going to put this amount in here, 35,900 and I'm going to put this amount here, 29,100. I'm just going to put the amounts in for now. If and this amount is a credit and that is a, amount is a debit. If this amount is a credit from last year, a credit from last year means that I did not pay it last year. Okay, I did not pay it last year. So I'm going to have to pay it. My plus means that I must pay it this year. So I'm going to pay this year. I did not pay last year. OK, that's why it's a credit. I, that I owe them the money. Therefore, I'm going to pay it this year. A debit means that I paid this year. So it's a debit this year. It means that I paid this year. Therefore, I am going to pay it. So if you look at it this way, if I must pay something this year, I plus. I didn't pay it last year, so I'm going to pay it this year. I paid it this year, therefore it's a debit. They owe me, therefore I paid it. So if you look at the inverse, okay, I'm just going to show you the inverse of this. And if I look at the inverse, if last year, oops, sorry, the pen is not working. If last year, okay, is a debit, then what must you do with it? And if this year is a credit, then what must you do with it? Then you must minus last year's debit because you already paid it, and you must minus this year's credit because you did not pay it. Please replay this to try and understand it. So that when you do your exam, I'm just going to write this down here. Paid this year. The debit means the debit from last year. It means that I paid, sorry, last year. Paid last year. 
So I don't have to pay it again. And that means I did not pay this year. And therefore I minus. Please go over the section again because learners find this very difficult. So how do I put this in my answer sheet now? Now that I've showed you all of that, how do I put this in my answer sheet? I'm simply going to open brackets. I'm going to put in my tax amount of 364,500. I'm going to plus my 35,900 and I'm going to plus my 29,100. That's a credit and that's a debit. Okay, and it's always income tax last year, this year. And then you'll figure it out that way. So my income tax paid must be in brackets because whatever's paid on the cash flow is an outflow. So it's 429500 And that is how you work out income tax paid. This section will cover dividends paid. And I'm going to show you the information that you require to calculate dividends paid. So let's just look at the cash flow statement. Okay, there we have the cash flow statement and we've just worked out tax paid. So under that, we are going to work out dividends paid. Now, there's two ways that you can work out dividends paid. There's a quick way and then there is a long way. Let me show you the quick way first. What do I need for dividends paid? I need only two bits of information, okay? When I look for at dividends paid, I look at my shareholders for dividends. So this amount is going to tell me or is telling me that last year, this is a credit, shareholders for dividends will always go under payables. So this is a credit. Oh, they don't have to say it's a credit. This is a credit and that's a credit, okay? So it means that from last year, I still owe my shareholders 115300 And for this year, I still owe my shareholders 191400 So this is my final dividend for this year. That's my final dividend for last year. Up here, I have my interim dividend for this year. So that I paid this year, that I did not pay last year. And anything that I did not pay last year, I'm going to owe this year. So the quick way to work out dividends, okay, let me show you. You just need two amounts. So if I look at dividends paid, and I'm gonna put it in brackets here, quick way, quick. I'm only going to need two bits of information. I'm going to need my shareholders for dividends last year plus my interim this year. That's the only information that I'm going to need to work out my dividends paid. I did not pay that last year. This is a credit, so I did not pay it. So I'm going to pay it this year. That's a plus and I paid the interim this year, so that is a plus. So I'm simply going to add that information together. So where do I find that information? There we go. There's my shareholders for dividends last year, 115,300, 115,300. That is last year, okay? So I'm going to put that in, and there's my interim dividend for this year. So it is this amount year plus that, and that is my dividends paid. That is the quick way. That is assuming that that's the information that's presented to me. Okay, so I'm going to show you the long way as well in case you don't get the information presented like this. So it's 115,300. That's my last year's credit that I did not pay. And this is my this year's interim. And there I have my, in brackets, I'm going to put the amount 277,300. That is my dividends paid this year. But I might not be that lucky to get this information. Okay, so then what do I do? Now, the long way. Okay, so that's dividends paid. Long way. And you might get the information like this. Then I'm going to need three bits of information. I'm going to need my total dividend. And you know that the total dividends is interim 
plus final for this year. Okay, that's my interim and final for my current year. And then I'm going to need, it's a long way, then I'm going to need my shareholders for dividends for last year. Okay, and then I'm going to need my shareholders for dividends for this year. And you're going to get to the same information. You're going to get to the same amount. So let me show you that information and we're going to get to the same answer. So presented, I have, there I have my interim dividend. That's my interim dividend there, 162,000. Okay, and there I have my final dividend. 191,400. So there, if I add those two together, I'm going to get my total dividend, and my total dividend is going to be 353,400. 353,400. Okay, that's my total dividend there. Then, remember I said I'm going to need last year's shareholders for dividends, 115,300. And I'm going to need this year shield for dividends 191,400. So there I have all my information right there. How did I get that amount? I added my interim and my final. Okay, for this year. That was 162. And that was 191,400. These two added together gives me that amount there. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to take my 353,400 and I'm going to plus my credit, 115,300, and I'm going to minus my other credit, which is 191,400. And I'm going to get the exact same amount that I found in the activity of 277,300. And there can you see you're going to get the same amount that is in brackets because it is my um, payment. I'm going to pay that amount. Let's go through it again. That's my total dividend plus my shareholders for dividends for last year, my credit, minus my shareholders for dividends this year, my credit, and it's going to give me that amount. It's exactly the same answer as simply taking my final from last year and my interim from this year. Okay, if you look at it this way, this is the final thing I'm going to say now. If you look at it this way, then this really cancels out because if that is made up of the 162 and 191, okay, if that cancels out, then what am I actually adding? I'm adding the 162 plus the 115, okay? So that is how you calculate it. We are still busy with the November paper of 2021, and now I'm going to look at the financing activities. The cash flow is divided into three sections, operating activities, okay, where you find cash generated from operations, interest paid, tax paid, and dividends paid. Then the cash flow from investing activities, and investing activities look at, they look at in a business, business growth, okay, they look at expansion. So it looks at fixed assets, fixed assets purchased, fixed assets sold, and it also looks at fixed deposit. Then my, in, my financing activity says, where does the money come from? And the money comes from issuing shares, okay, and making loans. But where does the money go to as well? It also goes to repurchasing shares and paying back the loan. So at the bottom here, you're going to find shares and loans. So shares issued, you can put there shares repurchase or repurchase of shares. And then I'm going to put down here loans because I'm not sure if I took out a further loan or if I repaid a loan. So I'm not sure yet because I did not look at the activity. Why am I doing this? Is because the first part, the video that I did earlier on, is connected to this question. So this is question 2.1 of the same question, November 2021. So I issued 100,000 new shares. So that was my balancing figure, remember? So I'm gonna copy that amount in into my cash flow. Learners, if your calculation was wrong somewhere, but you copy the wrong amount in, you still get a part mark. So if you make the connection between this amount 
Okay, my share is issued and I put that in my note. That amount will also go into my cash flow. So that is the same amount, 1250000 And this is all part of the same activity. It's for you to see connections between the work. So that amount goes there. Then the repurchase of shares, there's also a connection between 2.1. And what is the connection? The connection is that I calculated my average. Okay. Now, remember I used this example here. I said that the average goes into the ordinary share capital note. So that's the 850. That's the 120 that they told us is above the average that goes into retained income. So my average plus my above average that goes into my cash flow and that is 9 Rand 70. So I simply take 30,000, 30,000 there, the number of shares that I repurchased times it by the 970. So can you see the connection between this question and the cash flow. So that 970 is the buyback price that goes into my cash flow. So I'm hoping that you are learning quite a bit today. So that's 300,000 times 970. And that's where the 970 comes from. And that's going to give me 291,000 Rand. Then I need to see whether I took out a loan or whether I repaid a loan. So I'm going to look at loans here, okay? There's my opening balance and there's my closing balance. But I don't know whether, um, whether there's other information with regards to loans, so I'm going to go all the way down and I'm going to check out to see if there's any information with regards to loans. I don't find it. And let's see here. So the answer is no. Always check if there's additional information, learners. So I'm simply going to take, to get my answer, I'm going to take the difference between that amount and that amount. Let's just see if it's going to work out. Let's just see. You can calculate it as well. So my calculation is, where's my loans now? Two million two hundred, and I'm gonna minus my one million six hundred and fifty, and my answer is five hundred and fifty thousand. And yes, that is the amount of my loan that I repaid. How do I know I repaid? That was last year. I owed two hundred, sorry, two million two hundred. This year, I only owe 1650000 So this amount is less than that amount. So I repaid a loan. Okay. Repaid the loan. Or loan repaid. And I'm going to take my 2200000 and I'm going to minus my 1650000 and that gives me 550000 rand. That is the amount that I repaid paid. I'm going to add all of that together and that amount is going to go in there. So that is my big positive. That minus that minus that is going to give me 409,000. Okay. And that is the shares issued, the repurchase of shares and the loan covered in one video. Thank you very much learners. For this activity, we are just going to very quickly look at the bottom part of the cash flow. Okay, we're going to look at this part here. And this is easy, easy marks. But there's one portion that learners always get confused with. And I'm just going to show that to you quickly. Firstly, to get this amount here, okay, this amount here, which is the net change in cash and cash equivalents, you're going to take your cash from operating activities, and it's a positive amount. So that's going to go in your calculator. Then you are going to minus your cash from investing activities. Why are you minusing it? Because it's in brackets, and anything in brackets is a negative on the cash flow. It's an outflow. And then you are going to plus your cash from financing activities, and you're going to get this answer. And coincidentally, we are still busy with the November 2021 Paper. It's just broken up into small manageable 
videos. Okay, so I'm going to take those amounts and my net amount is 269,000 and it's a positive amount. If it's po it comes out positive on your calculator, you put it down as a positive amount. So where do we get the information for the balance at the beginning of the year? If I look at my cash, my money, there I have petty cash and cash float. Okay, that's also cash and cash equivalents, petty cash and cash float. 20,000. So I have 20,000 at my disposal, but I have an overdraft of 95,200. So my positive money minus my negative money. Okay, so I take 20,000 minus 95,200. 20,000, so I'm going to open brackets there. 20,000, which is money that I have, minus my 95,200. That's my overdraft, and I'm going to get a negative 75,200. That is my net cash balance. Don't forget this because learners always forget. Sometimes this is not stated as petty cash and cash flow. It is stated as cash and cash equivalents. If it's cash and cash equivalents, then it's positive money. It's money you have. If it's bank overdraft, you always minus it from your cash and cash equivalents to get your net cash. Okay, then you don't have this amount here. So how will you calculate it? How will you calculate it? You'll simply say that amount minus this amount. Okay, and then you're going to get 193,800. And that is how you calculate this amount here. So this amount is your balancing figure. But what happens if this amount and that amount is given? Then you always, here's a tip, you always minus up. So 193,800 in your calculator, it's a positive amount, minus negative. So you're going to put a minus, you're going to minus a negative amount. So to minus a negative amount, you're actually plusing. Okay, so that minus minus that will actually give you a big amount here because you're actually plusing these two together. So please note, that when you have a situation like this and you have to work out this amount, you always minus up. Please practice that in some other activities.